Okay, so the first question is, how should the N-word even be, uh, should the N-word even be in movies or music, and does it send the wrong message? For me, I think it depends on who's using it and in what context the person is using it in. Um, sometimes we, ourselves, amongst the community, we use it as, oh, that's my nigga, as an endearing term to embrace each other. But then again, if a white person is using it in a derogatory term, then that would be upsetting and frustrating to our culture. So I just feel like it all depends on the text you're using it in. It can be used to, to celebrate us as it can be used to demean us and hurt us. So that's what I think about that. I agree. Um, and following off of that, I feel like, you know, people that that's not of color who see us using the word feel as though they can use it and you really can't um, and we shouldn't have to stop using the word because you feel like you should be entitled to use this word. Okay, I'm a, I normally don't do this but I'm going to ask a question of, of, of two. Okay, so say you have a, a white child watching a black movie and they're using that word in a movie and then that white child tries to use it, you know? So what do you... See, that's where she, that's why she, that's what she was explaining. Like it depends on who's using it. So if you're going to put that white child in that movie, it should be somebody who they are of color who should stop it, who should speak up and say, no, we're not going to do this. This is not, you know. But, you know I think it is something for our community. It's something for our community. It's it was time for us to, you know, to degrade us and we proved it and we made it our own and then we use it as a screening term. I say it to whoever I say it to, depending on how I'm saying it and what tone I'm saying it. So. <laughs> okay, the next one is. Next question is How do you feel about watching the world finally react to the racism in this country? I feel so overwhelmed with happiness. You know, I didn't know it was this many people that really cared about what was going on. I didn't know it was this many people who really knew. I didn't know it was this many people who would show out. So. I really appreciate all the love because it's needed and hopefully this will be, you know, come to an end one of these days. It was so many people, you know, so it's crazy how a system can have this much control and there's so many of us that can really change it. Um, I want to do emphasis on the word finally. I'm angry. It took this long to be. I'm angry that we're still trying to explain what racism is. I'm angry that it's, it, it took for a video of George Floyd and the white officer being on his on his on his on his, on his, on his neck for white people to open their eyes and say, "Oh my God!" It, it, it took it had to be something so horrific. If that, if that doesn't speak to your soul, I don't know what type of person you are. So for me, I'm not happy. I'm angry that it took so long. I am frustrated that it took so long. The next question. Being the future of this country, what action will you take to ensure unity? Unity with whom? <laughs> I need to know who am I building this unity with? I don't see enough rapport. I don't see enough of anything to, to, to know who and what I'm building unity with. So, to be continued with that question. <laughs> When people say Black Lives Matter, how does that make you feel? Um, again, from the last question for me, it just makes me feel good. So many people, you know, believe that Black Lives Matter and we truly do matter. Not saying that nobody else lives matter, but we are just targeted and we need to let people know that we matter. So I'm going to say it like this. Black Lives Matter to me. We, 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 we had a contract, Let, let's say we had, we had a contract with the, the government, 
if you do something wrong to me or I do something wrong to her, then this, this government, these people that stand right here, is supposed to come in and they're supposed to rectify the situation. They're supposed to fix it. But instead, they are killing us. They are, the people who are supposed to be fixing things are killing us in and they broke that contract, so I feel, when you say Black Lives Matter, I feel like that is the most important thing to me. Because of the way that we are being targeted and killed in every way, in every system, every day. How do you, how do you feel about fighting the same fight that your ancestors fought? Heartbroken. Nothing has changed. They just did it in a different way. They figured out how to, you know, keep racism going in different ways. In systemic, in the healthcare. It just it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I just, it's like, do you ever get tired? Are you that much afraid of what, we, what don't we know that you know? You know, this is crazy. <laughs> just to learn my history and learn about how you know they built down when we uh, Tulsa and how they built uh, excuse me burnt down Tulsa and burnt down Rosewood where we built our own black economical health and, and wealth and they they took they stripped that from us you know I Black Wall Street Black Wall Street I want to repeat something that I heard from uh, you know uh, Kimberly Jones she said she said, imagine playing Monopoly for 400 years and and we had to play on behalf of that player. We, so everything that we won, everything that we built, we had to give away to somebody else for 400 years. Then they say, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and we did that with Tulsa, Black Wall Street. You know, even here in Philadelphia with the, the John Africa and, and his people. Now they had their own community and, and, and it was Philly was bombed. Those people were bombed. The move. So fifty two so we we played it their way for four hundred years and then fifty two years later we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps and you bombed everything that we built. You bombed it. You took it from us still. We were never designed to win. What she said was America is lucky that what black people is what black people is asking for is equality instead of going after revenge. And I 100 percent agree with that. All right. Because of that statement that I, I saw yesterday, that's the reason I'm here today, honestly. I gotta be here with my people. Alright, what do you think is the best way to end police brutality? I feel like there's no other way to end it but just to destroy the whole system. It needs to be this man to the whole system. It needs to be gone, period. It just needs to be gone. Do you, can you define gone? What do you mean by gone? It needs to, well, I feel like it needs to. It's, it's two words for it, and I cannot remember the words. It's either you go into the system and rebuild it from within. Or you destroy the whole thing and build it from the ground up. So that's what I mean by good. I mean absolutely good. In the history books. I think that we should police our own people um, in our communities. And I think that if it, I think from that point. What do we want? What do we want? I think that uh, we should. We should police our own people, and I think that if it gets out of hand from them, then we can call in their help as we see fit. Um, I, I just don't think, I think at this point, I don't think that they should be involved at all in policing black people. Every day you see their knee on our neck, you just see their knee on a, a lady neck. It's just every day you see something else. And then I see studies of how these images that we're seeing are causing trauma in these communities. Long lasting trauma. You know what I mean? Like, I experienced systematic racism myself at my own employment company. And I can give you, you know, specific examples as to finding out that I was underpaid for my position. 
as to uh, my, you know, I'm being asking my supervisor for advancement and him telling me um, that I um, I need to look for a new job rather than map out a plan for me to grow and advance in the company while watching people that I train. And it, and it really, it really did something to me. We talked about as early as 2016, this company that I worked with, and it really did something to me where so for me, what helped me through this was like prayer. It, it does something to you, it does. Seeing these images and being treated away by the color of your skin. I'm going to them constantly asking them questions and I'm getting the highest review. I'm told that I have the highest workload and the hardest workload on our team. I'm training employees. They can't give me a reason why, but yet they still own. The prime example, this young lady who started at the same time as me, she's now a manager, and now we discovered that she made the company, she cost the company a $72,000 mistake. These are the people that they're promoting. And they don't share the same skin color as me. And someone who has the most work and the hardest work is getting told, I don't know why you're angry. You, you know, look for another job if you want to advance. Why can't I grow within the company that I'm doing good in? Again, this is not like a interesting thing. So you recognize that How do you change the people that was raised to hate different races? I feel like there's no way to change them. They're going to be set in their ways. Um, only way that can maybe change them is they actually experience it firsthand. But other than that, I feel like there's no other way to, to change it. You can't change it now. Ain't nobody, you know, they're going to do it. I feel like, you know, with that being said, we black people, you know, we are not our ancestors in a way that we are not going to lay down and, and, take, and, and take that and, and, you know what I mean? So they, they have to come at us in a different way. I know, I pray to God every day that I never have any character with the police or, or in any way because, number one, I am licensed to care. And I just pray that they never have <laughs> All right, thank you ladies. <laughs>